Yesterday, Mrs. Robin was here, and you were asked to double highlight a reading passage from Wikipedia. Is that correct? Yeah. And I have Wheelers, and I have Kendra's, and I have Quinn's, and I have Garrett's, and you did this independently. So, um, would you take just a couple of seconds to remind yourself what you were looking for, and then tell an elbow mate? Yeah. <laughs> um, you agree that there is a controversy about who should get credit for developing the calculus. Isaac Newton or Godfrey Leibniz? True. Sure. And you have highlighted evidence from both sides. Is mm -hmm. that true? Yep. Okay, I would like for you now to um, watch a little Big Bang theory. theory section where they are discussing the who gets credit part. And it's only like 15 seconds. Okay, so it's the, the, the preview to this. They are setting up their Christmas tree, right? And they're deciding how to decorate the Christmas tree. And um, Leonard uses sarcasm, which of course Sheldon doesn't understand, but he says, Mary Newtonmas. So, here we are. Mary Newtonmas, everyone. <laughs> I sense that's not sincere, although I have no idea why. But it's fine, look, sir. Isaac can go right next to this little candy cane. No, Isaac goes at the top of the tree. No, he doesn't. I understand. You dispute Newton's claim that he didn't get to calculus, and you want to put Godfrey Leibniz on the top. <laughs> yeah, you got me on a Leibniz. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so you understand that sense of humor now, and I want to show you, um, I, want to, I want to have you get in groups, and I want you to start developing your own theory about which camp you're going to be on. Leibniz or Newton. And so I'm going to split you into three and two. So if um, Garrett and Quinn go to a different table and you three can stay here. This activity is going to be a, since you've already done the read, think, highlight, we are at the pair share timeline part of the activity. On this timeline, I want you to uh, pick out the information that you had for Newton and put it on the top of the timeline. And the information you had from Leibniz on the bottom of the timeline, and I'm gonna put you on a clock of 10 minutes. So you're going to choose, and then you're going to share with each other to see if one person in your group thought something was more important than the other. Okay? Tell your table mates what the activity is. And, and what stuff is that going to be, Quinn? Calculus. Important stuff that would support Newton should get credit for. It. And on the bottom of the, or underneath the timeline, it's about Leibniz, stuff that would support that he should get credit for calculus. Developing or inventing or, you know, whatever stance you're going to take on that. So, um, 10 minute clock. Now, you've had time to decide what you think is the most important. I would like for you to spend some time sharing with each other and deciding maybe I'd like to include that person's idea of what was important on my timeline or maybe I have something that they don't have so that you can, you know, sometimes I think it was hard for me to decide, am I choosing the important stuff or did I not choose the important stuff? So I want you to have some share times to, to, to um, talk with each other. I'm going to um, ask that one person at this table is in charge of making I'm going to make that move. You're going to be in charge of making sure that every person tells their ideas. Okay? Sometimes it's easy to let one person do all the talking. And then you guys are just going to take turns, um, starting with Newton. What did you think was important with Newton? What did you think was important with Newton? And you'll start with Newton, but Kendra's in charge of making sure all three of you speak and have time to um, edit your notes, okay? So it's, um, sometimes it's nice to um, give a compliment to the other person and say, oh, I like that. I'm going to write that down. But if you disagree with something, you can say um, nothing, 
or you can say, could you elaborate on why you thought that was important? Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to give you, um, let's see, two, four, six, maybe ten minutes on the clock. <clears throat> going to be a paring down yet one more time. I want you to take a highlighter, one color for the top, one color for the bottom, and I want you to circle the three most significant things that you think, like on the top, the three things that would support credit being, being given to Isaac Newton, and only three things on the bottom of your timeline that would support uh, Gottfried Leibniz getting credit for it. And this is an individual activity. You don't have to um, agree with your partner. So just take two highlighters and you have just maybe 60 seconds to choose that. So you have chosen. Now let me, let me put the, the rest of the project together in your mind. You are going to be writing a letter supporting either Isaac Newton or Gottfried Leibniz as the person who should get sole credit for it. You will be writing in that person's voice, in that person's time. Okay? So the letters that you write, I don't care which, which person you choose, but the letter that you write will be given to the fifth period pre-calculus class, and they are going to critique it to see if your reasons really do support your claim. Okay? They're going to do the same thing, but on, on Tuesday then, you're going to be getting the letters that they wrote over the weekend to you, and you're going to be critiquing their claim. Now um, would be a good time for you to see an actual letter that Isaac Newton wrote. You will be a little um, confused about some of the language, the flowery language, and, and I know some of you love to go there, and you're welcome to use that type of language, or you can use English. But I want you to see um, just how they wrote. So, eyes up here, please. This is a letter that Isaac Newton wrote to uh, Trinity College in 1669. Um, a lot of it's very technical, but the first paragraph gives you an idea of the type of language. It says, Sir, I received Dr. Wallace his mechanics which you sent to Mr. Barrow for me. <laughs> I must needs acknowledge you more than ordinarily obliging, and myself puzzled how I shall quit courtesies. Now let me translate that to you for you. Um, I got what you sent me, and it's just so much I don't know how to thank you. Right? That's a lot of well, <laughs> well it, it seems weird. Okay, so why do I think? I'm puzzled how I shall quit courtesies. I don't know how I'll quit being kind, or what's another person to understand that they did write to each other about the math. And so this creates a document, a timed document, about when certain things were relevant, or might be proof of who did it first, right? So um, he goes on and on about sequences and aggregates or sums and things like that. But I thought another interesting part would be how he um, ends his letter. He says he's going to do that only at his leisure and he signs your obliged friend and servant by his new So, here is your weekend homework. I want you to compose a letter in one of the two voices, either as Isaac Newton and you are writing to um, the committee that decides whether you should get credit for or not. Is that clear? So, now, how are you going to be great? First of all, fifth period is going to analyze it to see if it's right. Okay, if, if your facts are correct, um, then you'll get higher marks. This is a, a rubric on um, a persuasive piece of writing. And your letter is going to be a persuasive piece of writing um, depending on why you should get credit for it. 
So we're going to use the introduction. Does the introduction grab the reader's attention? Yes or no? Okay. Does the introduction tell the topic of the essay? Yes or no? Does the uh, introduction state the author's position on the topic? Does the introduction preview the reasons for the position? So um, <clears throat> fifth period is going to rate you, and then I'm going to rate you. Okay. Now the body, I'm only choosing um, one, maybe two things out of this part of the rubric to use. Does the body include at least three major reasons? Those are the things that you already highlighted that supports the author's position. And um, I'm wondering if I should use six or not. Does the author elaborate on and explain each of the major major reasons? So depending on how flowery you get with your language and how much you write, this might come into play. And then I'm going to jump down to the conclusion. Does the conclusion summarize the author's position? Does the essay have a definite conclusion that wraps up the essay? So in effect, you are persuading the math committee that you should get credit. You need three reasons. How many reasons? Three. Three. Do you have any questions? Can I wait until you have made up your own mind? Sure. Okay. Um, well, at a garage sale, this oh, no, I'm going to do that. Oh, I just had it. Oh, at a garage sale this summer, I found a signet ring, and Mr. Klinder said he would be okay if if we use uh, a waxing method to seal your work. And he said we are allowed to use just as as much heat as necessary, and no more than to seal your letter with a wax signet. So it'll be very authentic in terms of how they did the writing back then. They always sealed it with wax. And so we'll do that on Monday, and then I will give your letters to fifth period, and then Tuesday I will give fifth period's letters to you. Any questions?